So in 2018, the American Academy of Neurology, AAN, issued an update on their practice guidelines for treatment of MS. The diagnostic criteria, the McDonald diagnostic criteria, are strictly dealing with the diagnosis of MS. They say nothing about treatment. The AAN 2018 practice guidelines are focused on what we can say meaningfully about treating MS individuals, largely relapsing forms, but also now primary progressive. And these are a number of uh, practice guidelines that reviewed the literature and came up with statements uh, that involve initiating a disease-modifying therapy, how it should be done, what you should take into consideration, switching a disease-modifying therapy. There are a number of statements that review the literature and have different strengths of confidence. And finally, even a few points on considering stopping a disease-modifying therapy. So the AAN practice guidelines are focused strictly on therapy not diagnosis. The goals of therapy for MS is to stop the disease from evolving in all metrics that we have. That's the goal, and that metric includes clinical attacks, new lesions on MRI scans, slowing the rate of disability, and dealing with a number of pieces that we don't really have a great handle on, such as cognition, fatigue, you know, and sympt other symptomatology. So that's really the goal. The goal is an improved quality of life. Right? And what we've accomplished and been able to accomplish over the last couple of decades is treatments that really alter the disease course. Whereas previously, all we had was the idea of treating a symptom that a patient may have. Now we can actually alter the course of their disease with the treatments we have available. We entered the therapeutic era in MS in 1993, 25 years ago, um, when interferon beta 1b was approved. In the ensuing 25 years, we now have probably 14 agents or something, it changes a little bit, uh, which has given us a wider range of choices and a wider range of efficacies to choose from. And so the evolution has gone from one drug fits all to multiple drugs, multiple routes of administration, and multiple considerations around a what you want the efficacy to be, B, uh, safety, tolerability, C, an assessment of comorbidities, what else is going on medically with that individual that might impact which of the therapies, and D, and very importantly, what's the patient's role and in input in choosing the therapies, and this is one of the very important things, and this is in the AN guidelines, and we do this as part of comprehensive MS care, is you have to partner with the patient so that they understand what you're treating and you understand how they feel about the illness and how they feel about the therapies. Uh, and it's a very important partnership because the medication only works if people take it. And so they have to be on board and they have to be properly informed of the of the what you hope to achieve realistically with the efficacy and what the risks are, what the safety is, and how that fits in with their with their lifestyle. One of the things we learned back 25 years ago when we would put people at the at this heart dose of interferon. And a year into the therapy, they say, well, how do you feel? And say, well, I don't feel any better. In fact, I feel worse because I'm taking this interferon. It has side effects. And what's it done for me? I'm the same as I was. And we'd say, yeah, you're the same as you were. You didn't have any more attacks. But it's sort of like you're taking away a negative. So they wouldn't necessarily feel better, but they also wouldn't feel what they could have been if they had had more attacks. And so that becomes a part of the education process and, and having you know, the conversation so there's realistic expectations uh, for the therapies.